Judge Creighton is a district court judge across the river over in Caddo Parish in Shreveport, but he's very active in, in all of the local communities. He handles several programs for children that I'll talk to you about briefly in just a minute. Judge Creighton's been a district court judge. He sits on the bench and he is a judge over in Caddo. He's been a district court judge for 23 years. Before that, he was an assistant district attorney with the Caddo Parish District Attorney's Office, and then before that, he was in private practice. Judge Creighton is an excellent judge. He's a, he, he, he is very fair, but he sits in both criminal and civil court. And several years ago, he started these programs to reach out to, to particularly to kids because he saw too many kids come through his courtrooms that had made really stupid mistakes because they didn't understand the law. He's here today, he does these programs, I'm here today, but he takes a tremendous amount of his own time. Nobody pays him to do these programs. He takes his own time to reach out to young people like you to try to help you to where you won't make silly mistakes and won't make stupid mistakes that will uh, affect the rest of your life. So with that, uh, let me introduce my friend, District Court Judge Scott Creighton. And, and thank you, my friend, Richard Ray. Uh, good morning. Everybody happy? Everybody good? I want to talk about several issues today in the next half hour or so. Uh, that will include the law on sexting, the law on cyberbullying, some rules regarding internet safety, and uh, some other issues that I will, I will conclude with at the end of my presentation. Let's get started. What is the legal definition of sexting? It is a crime. It is a crime. It is the act of sending sexually explicit photographs or photos electronically, primarily between cell phones. It is, as I said, a crime that is practiced primarily by high school teenagers and young adults, though it is known to occur in middle schools, and it's known to occur even with regard to sixth graders and seventh graders. The danger, of course, is that anything that is, that is sent out, anything that we use the word distributed, but anything that is sent out uh, can be easily and widely distributed to anybody on the planet. The originator, that would be the person sending it, has no control over where that photo may end up. And once it's out there, there's absolutely no way of getting it back. You can't, you can't say five minutes later, well, I made a mistake. I want to I bring that photograph back or I want to undo that message. It's, it's out there. It's done. It cannot be erased. It cannot be reversed. One quick example with regard to sexting. Once you post your image online, you can't take it back. Anyone can see it. Family, friends, anyone. Remember, think before you post. You should think before you post. You know, I'm almost 60 years old. I'll be 60, age 60. I'm an old guy. I'll be 60, <laughs> no offense to anybody who may be 60, but, but uh, I'll be 60 in June. And uh, when I was in high school and in, and in middle school, that was in the 1960s. And of course, we didn't have these, these devices, the, these cell phones, if, if I can locate mine for, by way of example. We didn't have these, and we didn't have a laptop, and, and we, had a, we had what we called a phone booth, okay? And if, there was, if, and if there was anybody who was going to post an inappropriate picture, a picture that should not be put on the bulletin board uh, or, or, or distributed, it would have to be uh, by handing it to somebody or, putting it on, or taping it on the wall, just as that. 
But here's the, here's the point about the, the, the business of cell phones is that, again, once you take that photo that you shouldn't take to begin with, and once you send it, you can't get it back. So you must think before you post. Sexting can lead to unintended and severe consequences. It's been linked to severe embarrassment when the photos are passed to people other than the intended person to whom it's meant to be sent, all right? The intended recipient. So let me give you a, an example here Shut if I have one. With a troubling activity, more teens are taking part in it. It's called sexting. Using a cell phone to take and send revealing pictures. We brought you Jesse Logan's story last week. She took her own life after being teased and tormented when her picture was forwarded by an ex-boyfriend to hundreds of other students. Today, national correspondent Natalie Morales has more on that. Natalie, good morning to you. Matt, good morning. Sexting not only leads to embarrassment and grief, but many teens who sext are finding the consequences more severe than they ever imagined. Florida teenager Philip Alpert is a registered sex offender. I don't think that I deserve to be on that list. I don't deserve to be next to someone who rapes and murders and, you know, hurts children. At 18, he was convicted for transmitting child pornography after emailing nude photos his ex-girlfriend had sent to him to more than 70 people. It's a troubling trend from lewd web postings to sending racy pictures known simply as sexting. Teens may do it for fun, not thinking it's wrong, but some are being charged with real crimes. Albert is serving five years probation and will remain a sex offender until he's at least 43 years old. As a result, he says he got kicked out of college, he can't find a job, and has to attend weekly meetings with other sex offenders. Ruined a big part of my life, and it's going to be ruining my life for a very long time. According to one national survey, about 20% of teens admitted to sexting. But with teens as young as 13 being arrested for it, some legal experts are crying foul. The law has not caught up to the technology. These kids are being prosecuted under an old law. Okay, we can stop that video here. I do want to emphasize a couple of points. Again, sexting can lead to terrible, terrible consequences. It might amount to additional higher grade felony behavior, which could lead to an arrest. So. That is pr uh, primarily the, the focus of this, of this little video. Uh, since 2010, sexting in Louisiana is a crime. I mentioned that just a little bit ago. And uh, the legislature has said this about this crime. Let me, let me define it. Let me, let me read you the law, and then I'm going to give you some easy examples that you can follow. The first paragraph of the two-paragraph law is this. No person under the age of 17 years shall knowingly and voluntarily use a computer or telecommunication device to transmit an indecent visual depiction of himself to another person. All right, I'm going to give you, hold that thought. I'm going to give you an example in just a second. Paragraph two is this. No person under the age of 17 years shall knowingly possess or transmit an, an indecent visual depiction that was transmitted by another under the age of 17 years in violation of the provisions of paragraph one of the subsection. Now, you may be wondering, well, Judge, what, what does all that mean? That sounds like a bunch of legal stuff to me. Can you give me an example? And I have several examples here. We'll start with example number one. Example number one is a 14-year-old boy takes a naked photo of himself and sends it to a girl that he likes. That would be a violation of law. That would be a crime. It is sexting, which is a violation of the law. Example two, the girl in example one keeps it on her phone. That would be a violation of the law, which is possession of that indecent visual photo. All right, everybody with me? All right, I'm going to go on to several more examples. Example three, the girl in examples one and two forwards it to her best friend. Is that a violation? And why would it be a violation? Well, it's, it's transmitting that indecent visual photo to someone else. So it fits under paragraph two. Example four, 
A 15-year-old receives an inappropriate photo from someone else and sends it to his friends. That would be a violation under the law as well. Example five, this being the last example that I will give you. A 14-year-old girl takes a photo of a 13-year-old girl while she's showering at a slumber party. The 14-year-old girl sends it to her friends and her classmates. Is that a violation? Yes. In any of these examples, the people involved have committed a crime. They have committed a misdemeanor crime for which they can go to jail if convicted, for which they can pay a fine and suffer the consequences of embarrassment and, and other, other consequences as well. <clears throat> so, sexting involves, just by way of somewhat of a summary, taking a photo, an indecent picture that, that should not be taken to begin with. It involves sending it. It involves possibly, on the other hand, receiving it or possessing it. It involves sending it to another. All of these are violations of law. Those would be uh, examples of the violation of the sexting statute, the sexting law. The crime of sexting is a misdemeanor and it is punishable with a fine of, of uh, $100 up to $250 and jail time. All right, so we're talking, we are talking uh, juvenile detention. We are talking jail time for this type of criminal offense. Regarding Snapchat, it is not what it seems. It is a, a photo sharing app for sending SMS photos. Users set the pictures to delete after a few seconds. Do you think they actually delete? Do you think they can somehow be retrieved later with certain software? From Snapchat's privacy policy, it says this, we cannot guarantee that the message contents will be deleted in every case. Messages, therefore, are sent at the risk of the user. All right, that's, a, that's somewhat of a legal statement for them to say, we're not responsible for any of this. Well, the fact of the matter is, it can be retrieved. So, again, Snapchat, this business of, the, of that photo disappearing is not going to necessarily be foolproof. It's going to be subject to being retrieved. That is, the photograph is subject to being retrieved by certain other software. Taking a picture of the phone with the image displayed, there is software which allows the recipient to recall uh, the image from the phone's local memory. Forensic researchers have discovered that Snapchat photos on many phones are merely hidden, not deleted, and are still available for retrieval with the right software. Everybody understand that. So, I'm going to move on just a little bit through the, to uh, Instagram. A not-so-innocent photo sharing situation. Strangers can follow and access your account if privacy settings are not properly set. This is another possible dangerous consequence of doing any of this. Location services should be turned off. If not, strangers can pinpoint where photos were taken and can find you. Instagram has poor filters, inappropriate pictures, and videos are rampant. Abuse and bullying often occurs in the comments section, and there are not sufficient parental controls. Instagram has a public video sharing app using your mobile device's camera. You can take a short video and upload it to Instagram where it goes out publicly. Followers can follow the child's account, find out where the video was taken via location services or geolocation, then share the video with their networks. Vine is for uploading and sharing short video clips. There are no parental controls and there's a huge vol volume of inappropriate videos out there. These apps are intended for adult use, not for kids, Snapchat, Vine, et cetera. Uh, parents, those parents in the room, and as a parent, I'm with you. Uh, my, my sons are in their 20s, but uh, I was always concerned about cell phone use and you know, inappropriate cell phone use among high school kids and middle school kids. It's my view that parents need to be involved and should monitor their child's cell phone. After all, they pay for it 
And, you know, we, we, we need to keep in mind the, the, the situation of adult and child. All right? I know people may not, some, some of the sixth graders may not want to quite hear that, but, you know, we have an obligation. We have a duty. We have, we have a responsibility to make sure that you're educated, that you're safe, and you don't fall into any inappropriate conduct. So parents, in my opinion, should monitor their child's phone and computer use and should also uh, utilize filters that are available out there, such as youknowkids.com and other such items. <clears throat> there are, with regard to some of these inappropriate photos that are taken, there can be other crimes involved. And, and it depends on the nature of the photograph. And I'm not going to talk about this too much in detail because I don't think it's necessary today. But, but there can be other crimes that are worse crimes than, than just sexting. And it depends on the nature of the video or the photograph. That would include pornography uh, involving juveniles, which is a felony offense and carries with it a sex offender registration requirement. You may recall the video that we just saw. That's a good example of, of that. And obscenity, which is also a felony crime. <clears throat> there are also some non-legal but extremely serious consequences to, to, to engaging in any, of this, in any of this electronic misbehavior. With regard to high school admission, here we are, middle school. We want to be able to make sure that the path is clear for you to go to the high school of your choice, maybe next door, it may be somewhere else, and you don't want any, any blemishes on your record. Ultimately, you know, you're going to get out of high school and go on further, and it may include going to college. So a college admission form down the line, let's try to think in advance just a little bit, four, five, six years or so, you know, in advance, we need to think about where we want to go. And I, I can tell you this, if for anybody who applies to college, there are lots of questions that are asked on the application form. Lots of questions. And that includes, have you ever been given a citation for any, for any misconduct, any crime? Have you ever been arrested? Have you ever been convicted? You know, we've got the rest of middle school, we've got high school, we have things that happen after that. But at some point, we're looking, let's, let's think about our future. And down the line, when, when you want to be a responsible adult when, at age 18 and you want to get a job at, eight, at age 18 or age 21, this information can be public. It can be public record. So because it's a crime, it can be ultimately learned by someone that you want to employ you. 70% of United States recruiters report having rejected job applicants because of information they found online. It is, it is so much easier these days to do research on someone, and if they don't have a clear record, then it can be found out. You never know who may be checking your profile and looking at your pictures online. Let me move into a, a, a video example. Hey, Sarah. Oh my gosh, this is so cute. But do it like I taught you. Love the new tattoo, Sarah. Dude, that's Sarah. Sarah. The girl in the pink shirt, that's the girl I was telling you about. Theater two on your left. Hey, Sarah, what color underwear today? Hey, Sarah, so when are you going to post something new? Anything you post online, anyone can see. So think before you post. Again, think before you post. All of that inappropriate. And it cannot be retrieved. It's embarrassing. It's inappropriate and it's illegal. Let's talk about doctored photos. And this is, the la I think, the last frame with regard to this area of law. Another consequence is cyberbullying, because sometimes sexting can, can also spin off into what I'm going to talk about next, which is cyberbullying in which software Photoshop is utilized to doctor photos, modify or change photos, and they're then posted without any consent. And, they're, and, if, and if it's in the cyberbullying context, it is meant to be harassing and embarrassing. So the point would be 
not to have any of those photos out there ever, not to take them, not to possess them, not to send them, not to ever engage in that behavior. Now moving on to the next area of law that we're going to talk about this morning is cyberbullying. It is defined by law, cyberbullying is a crime. It used to be, when I was in school, way back in the 60s, that if there was a bully in school, well, that guy was through at 3 o'clock. So anybody who was the victim of a bully could go home and no more bullying from that point on to perhaps the next day. There's always been policies against bullying. However, in every school there's a bully out there or two. And uh, these days, with the benefit of electronic devices, bullying can take place 24 hours a day, seven days a week, every day of the month, all year. It is a very serious problem. You need to report any cyberbullying to your teacher, your principal, your, your parent. It is defined by law as follows. It is the transmitting of any electronic, textual, visual, or written or oral communication with the malicious and willful intent to coerce, abuse, torment, or intimidate a person under age 18. You might be thinking, well, Judge, there you go again, talking all that law stuff. Can you give me a, an example or two? Well, the answer is yes, I can, and I'm happy to. Let's move to an example. A 14-year-old girl takes a photo of a 13-year-old girl while she's, slumbering, while she's showering at a slumber party. We saw that example with regard to sexting. The 14-year-old sends it to her friends and classmates. She then posts the photo on Facebook with the intent to embarrass the 13-year-old girl. Do you think that qualifies for both sexting and cyberbullying? Two violations, two crimes. <clears throat> Again, transmitting of any electronic, visual, written, or oral communication with the malicious and willful intent to coerce, abuse, torment, or in intimidate another person, that other person being under age 18. All right? <clears throat> Example two, a group of girls any age, and by the way, it could be a group of guys any age, but a group, in this example, a group of girls any, any age get together and send a series of cell phone texts or emails to another girl who is under 18, and those emails or phone texts are mean, intimidating, and hurtful. Okay, Lindsay, you're up. Today I'm going to talk about Patty. Patty's best characteristics, she's stupid, stupid and ugly. Everything she does is ugly. Watch her eat, watch her stuff her face. Look at her, greasy hair, dirty fingernails. It makes me want to vomit. Her dad doesn't work, they have no money. That's why she wears that nasty pink sweater. Everyone hates her, even the teachers, and they're supposed to like everyone. Get a life, Patty. Thank you. Well, if you, if you would not say it to the person, and perhaps I would suggest that you wouldn't say that to this other girl under any circumstances, but if you wouldn't say it, certainly don't write it. Don't send it by, by text, don't send it by email, because it is inappropriate, it's not okay, it is wrong, and it's a violation of law, which is cyberbullying. You know, cyberbullying is a nationwide problem. By that, of course, I mean it's a problem not just in the state of Louisiana. It's a problem in every single state in this country. And it can and has had devastating consequences. By that, I mean some terrible, terrible results of, that have, have happened as a result of kids primarily high school, some middle school, engaging in cyberbullying. 
Let me give you an example. When another horrible situation involving a child is under investigation tonight in Palm Beach County, 11-year-old Celine Okwene was found dead in her own bedroom in Port St. Lucie. She had hanged herself in the closet with a belt around her neck, and her parents discovered her there last night. Her parents said her diary reveals that she had suffered from bullying in school. Celine was a student at St. Anastasia Catholic Church in Fort Pierce. A letter was sent home to parents and students today informing them of the death. Several parents told a reporter from our sister station in Palm Beach that bullying has been a problem at that school for more than a year. The point here is that it can lead to terrible, terrible consequences that cannot be reversed as, as, as evidenced by that video and it should never happen, and it should be reported and dealt with appropriately. Uh, so my suggestion and, and strong word to you is if this is going on, you need to let somebody know about it. For example, a parent, for example, a teacher, for example, your principal, an adult, a responsible adult in your family, to let them know, and ultimately law enforcement, so that it can be stopped. The penalty for cyberbullying is possible jail time up to six months in jail, a fine up to $500, and seizure and impoundment of the electronic device, that being the cell phone, the computer, the photography equipment, etc. A related cr crime is cyber stalking. I'm not going to spend too much time on that. It's very similar to cyberbullying. I'm going to move on to something for the parents. I know the parents are paying close attention to this. Uh, this is what the law is in Louisiana. The Louisiana Civil Code, Article 2318, says the mother and father are responsible for any damage caused by their minor child. You may recall that I mentioned earlier that, that, that parents, we have an obligation in a lot of respects. You know, we have a job to do, and we want to do our jobs as perfectly as we can. We're not perfect, but we want to do as good a job as we can. And, and one of those jobs is to get you through, get you through childhood without any mishaps and without any, without any negative consequences. Well, parents need to be involved in, and, and you should welcome your parents being involved uh, in, in your lives and, and knowing, knowing about your cell phone and knowing about your computer, all right? So, and, here, and here's from a legal standpoint, why? Of course, they should, you know, they should morally, but in addition, legally, there's an additional reason. They're responsible for any damage caused by, by minor children. And they can be sued for any injuries or damage caused by their minor children. That's what the law is in the state of Louisiana. Okay, let's move on. I think the next section is internet safety. We have covered so far the law on sexting. We have talked about cyberbullying. We have talked briefly about cyber stalking. And we have, we have talked about civil liability for parents. Now let's move on to uh, the issue of internet and electronic safety. It is impossible to know with whom you're really communicating if, you don't, if you're communicating with somebody that, that, that you don't know personally, all right? Because predators, that is someone who might want to hurt a child, often impersonate teens online. All right, let me repeat that. If you are communicating with someone online, whether it's, whether it's lap, by way of laptop computer, by way of text message, by any other form of, of media, you need to know with whom you are talking. Who are you talking to? Who are you communicating with? And the reason is, and I'm, I'm, I'm saying this twice for emphasis, is that someone who may want to hurt a child can sometimes play like they are a teenager online. Ooh, should I wear my black one with the white trim or my pink one? You should totally do the polka dot, but send me a pic of both. Mm, I, I don't know, I could get in trouble. OMG, I would never show anyone. Promise. Does everybody agree with me that this is very creepy? Yes. 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 All right. <laughs> I think we're unanimous, aren't we? 
I would say, if I was in court, I'd say the jury has reached a unanimous opinion and verdict. Creepy, creepy, and I think this, this video evidences the creepiness of it. Let me move on to a very, very tragic and sad example regarding internet safety. A registered sex offender, Brian Horn, allegedly posed as a teenage girl and communicated by text with this 12-year-old child, Justin Bloxham. Authorities report that Brian Horn convinced Justin to leave with him in his cab on the pretext that, that Brian Horn was going to take young Justin to meet another 12-year-old girl. Brian Horn murdered this 12-year-old little boy. I use the word allegedly because his trial has not come up yet. It's pending in DeSoto Parish, in the, in the parish uh, just, south, just south of us. His trial is set later this year. But this, th this case is, a, is, of course, a real-life example of a terrible, tragic consequence of this 12-year-old communicating with someone that he does not know and trusting someone that he does not know. Now, let me say this. The vast majority of people in this country and, and, and all over this world in Bossier Parish, in the city of Bossier, good people, great people, vast majority, most everybody's good people. But there may be a few people that we have to be careful about, and, and they're out there. So we have to be aware, we have to be careful, and we need to exercise a pr appropriate level of caution. We don't need to be scared and fearful and, and trembling and anxious, but we do need to be careful with whom we communicate online and we need to be careful about our, our safety. So always know with whom you're communicating, to whom you're sending an email or text message, and from whom you're receiving an email or a text message. Always know that. We're going to summarize what I just talked about. Number one, the crime of sexting is obviously illegal and it is punishable by a fine and jail time. It may also lead to other unintended consequences, which we talked about during the presentation. Number two, cyberbullying is also a crime and it is therefore illegal it is particularly obnoxious and abusive, sometimes leading to irreparable results. That means results that you can't undo. And let me, let me say this, as a judge presiding in criminal court, I cannot tell you how many young people have come before me charged with crimes and they say, Judge, I wish I could undo it. I wish I could go back. I wish I could erase what I did, but I can't. There's no rewind button, there's no delete, there's no erasing of, of what you do. This cyberbullying business can, be, can lead to irreparable results, non-reversible, can't erase it, can't delete it, can't undo it, and it is, it is a crime that, that uh, is punishable by fine and up to six months in jail. Number three, Snapchat photos and images can be recalled and saved. You know, if you, if you were to engage in this behavior, which I think is a terrible, terrible, bad idea, and it's illegal, understand that Snapchat is not what it seems. It can be recalled, it can be saved. Apps like Snapchat, Instagram, and other things are intended for adults and are filled with inappropriate conduct or, or content for kids. Number four, if you commit and are convicted of any of these crimes, you may be required to disclose this embarrassing information on college applications, the result of which may be that you are not admitted to the college of your choice. All right, you want to have all your options open. We don't know what lies ahead. We want the best for you. So therefore, we want, we want a clean record. We want, a, we want good grades. And uh, the result could be that you're not admitted to the college of your choice. The result could be that you are denied a scholarship. College costs money. 
colleges are not free, high schools are free, middle schools are free, elementary schools are free, but colleges cost money and that's called tuition that, that parents pay and, and to help us our children need to be able to qualify for scholarships and therefore if you have engaged in this conduct you may not be able to go to college because you can't get a scholarship or both situations but perhaps no scholarship no college and therefore paragraph three which is both number five the mother and father are responsible for the damages caused by their minor child parents can be sued for injuries or damage caused by their children Number six, if you receive any inappropriate text or image on your cell phone, your computer, your iPhone, or any electronic device, report this to a parent or teacher, report it to your principal, report it to a responsible adult. Will everybody agree with me about that? And to do so immediately. Number seven, Always know with whom you are electronically communicating. Please don't get online chatting with someone that you do not know. That is dangerous, dangerous behavior. <clears throat> Number eight. And finally, parents should monitor their child's phone and computer use and utilize filters such as the tools available at youknowkids.com or covenanteyes.com. Don't be offended if your parents say, look, you know, you're in the sixth grade or you're in the seventh grade or you're in the eighth grade and, and um, I'm gonna allow you to have a cell phone. However, I reserve the right to look at it and to monitor it, that is to check it out. They're doing their jobs. So, Please understand that. We want the very best for all of you, and we want, to, we want you to avoid any possible bad results or bad consequences, and we want you to know what the law is, as well as what the moral implications and consequences are. Okay, I'm done. Thank you very much.